Well, hey, MGTOWN, this is MGTOWN Jesus, and today is a more lighthearted episode about the four factors of impulse. I'll make it quick, I promise. It's no big deal. We're just going to run through this really quick, okay? Today we're going to talk about the GIFs. I like to call them the GIFs because it's a great little acronym. J is for Jones Effect. Jones Effect's been around for well over a hundred years now. If not since the dawn of man, some people call it thou shalt not covet or envy, right? <laughs> well, Jones effect. It means keeping up with the Joneses. You see your neighbors, you see people out and about with the cell phones, or maybe they have some new car, or maybe they have this or that, and you go, oh man, I want that too. Why do you want that? Is it because they have it? Or is it because you need it, but you weren't sure which one to go with, but then you saw Johnny over there really enjoying his Android, and you saw Susie kind of enjoying her iPhone, and you thought, mm, I like the way Johnny enjoys his Android more. It seems like he can do more with it. Oh, is that an emulator on your, I, on your Android? And you can play Zelda Link to the Past? Dude, that's my favorite game! And you end up, you know what I'm saying? You end up getting a droid. That's the Jones effect. So I could use that in two different ways. I could be vague, just to build slight impulse. I say, hey, I've been talking to your neighbors, or it seems like everyone that comes in here gets this product, right? Well, this is the car that most men buy anyway. Or this is the car that the wife will love when you bring it home. A lot of guys come in here getting this car for their wives. Very vague. I could say something specific. I could be like, well, Mr. Thompson came in earlier today. Uh, you know, the gentleman with, uh, you know, that, that works for such and such. Or, I, you know, actually, you said you work for this company? I know three guys, John, Tom, and Miss Susan. They all work there, and they love this product. They actually have it. Uh, or maybe you're out and about. Maybe you're doing door-to-door. -door. And you say, hey, you know your neighbor T Timothy next door? Yeah, him and his wife and their little dog. The little the golden retriever. Yeah, I just talked to them earlier today. They signed up. I saved them 60 bucks. I'm going to save you 70 And watch them agree to do the deal. Watch them agree to buy the product. To subscribe to your service. Because you use the Jones effect. The next one is indifference. Indifference means the person with the least amount of invested interest. And what is that? Time, money, and emotion. As long as you can commit to a short amount of time, hey, I'll make it quick, I'll make it fast, it only takes two minutes, sir, 20 minutes, you're in and out of here. Look, what time is it? Four o'clock? It's winter time? By 5.30, you'll be done. Before the sun goes down, you'll be out of here. I will make it fast. Not even that. It takes me, f sir, how much time will you give me? I'll give you 20 minutes. Perfect. I only need 15. Right? Customer gives you the commitment, you knock it out of the park, you show them value within the first 15, they're going to stay for 45. You show them that there's value in spending time with you for them, that you can solve a problem, you can apply something to them, and they're going to give you more commitment. But if you can't, you better honor that commitment and let them go. That's the honesty of it. That's the truth of it. That's the risk behind time commitment in indifference. Now, that's time. Money. If you show more interest in making a sale than you do in helping them buy, you have lost the deal. I'll say it again. If you care more about making this sale than you do about helping them buy, you have lost the deal. Okay? So if I start to see money involved, if I start to push certain things to try to get me more money, right? Or maybe I, there's money involved. Perhaps I need the commissions. Well, then guess what? They're not going to want to buy from you because they don't trust your word. At this point, you'll say how great something is or they can't trust your review. Maybe you have no Jones effect because you sell TVs. And unless you're selling to a Hispanic person and you want to say that Hispanic person, hey, every Mexican that comes in here buys a plasma. Oh, my God. Well, first off, that's terrible. But you see what I'm getting at. You're not really going to get anywhere with that anyway. You have to use indifference. And if you start trying to sell and you're starting to show that you're getting greedy, they're out. They don't trust you. And, of course, emotion. Now, let's say a customer tells you something like, Oh my gosh, this is perfect. My brother's going to love it. And you start to be like, well, oh, great. Oh, da -da -da -da. And, da -da -da -da. and you start to have a heightened voice. You start to animate more. Your eyes get big. You get a big smile on your face. You know, and all, the, all your customer is thinking is, oh, shit, 
I just gave away that I was going to buy this or that I'm interested. Well, I'm not going to tell them anything else. You know? And you may not actually figure out what the true why is behind it and, and how to sell them on it. You just screwed yourself. The only thing you've got to go on now is that the brother might like it. Well, maybe the brother might like a Samsung instead of the LG that you're trying to sell them. Maybe the brother would be more interested in a, in a foreign-built car instead of an American-built car. You just kind of screwed yourself up, right? And you hurt the customer because there may be something better about your product that you didn't get a chance to tell them about because you didn't know they needed to know it, and now they're going somewhere else to buy a Sony instead of a Samsung, right? They're going to buy the iPhone instead of the Droid. They're going to go with T-Mobile instead of, instead of Verizon. Anyways, so that's what it is. The GIFs. Jones effect, indifference, a fear of loss, and a sense of urgency. Now, fear of loss. This is an advanced impulse factor, and it can only be used if you have built value. So it comes later in the sale. Some try to use it early in the sale. Those who are very experienced with it can subtly hint at the idea of a fear of loss. But that's usually in those who have warm leads. If you're talking to a cold lead, someone right off the street, someone right at the door, someone who just walked in, it's just curious. Fear of loss isn't going to do anything. Okay? A warm lead, someone who's already invested some interest, a little bit of time, is asking questions. That's the person you can apply fear of loss to throughout. But fear of loss generally is going to be at the end of a sale. And here's how you use it. Once I've built value, I've applied it to your life, I've made it make sense for you, it solves a problem and you get tons of benefits versus the cost. There's more value versus cost, right? Then I've got to threaten to take it away. Well, look, I've only got three left. This sale ends in... What time is it, sir? I close at six, it's three o'clock. This sale ends in three hours, you know? So, you think your wife is going to love it? I don't know. Well, let me ask you this. You've been married to her how long? Uh, ten years. Okay, so you're telling me you've been married to your wife ten years. You're going to save $60 on this service. And you're telling me she doesn't want to save 60 bucks a month and get her movie channels back? Or, or how about this? And you're telling me she has battery issues. This droid will last over 28 hours or over 36 hours without being stuck to a charger. Even on medium settings, not low, like dim, we're talking medium settings, and you're telling me she wouldn't want that for a hundred bucks less than the iPhone that only lasts eight hours? Well, you're right, you're right. You know, you start to apply these things, then you say, well, look, I've only got two left in the back. You and your wife need phones together. If you don't get it today, I'm probably going to sell one tomorrow, or I'm going to sell both tomorrow. Or, well, it's still only three o'clock. I've still got three hours. You know, it is what it is, sir. My job is just to make sure you get the best deal. I'll make it quick for you. It's nothing serious. It's just my job to make sure my customers are taken care of. Right? That's a sense of urgency. That's a fear of loss. But I'm also using indifference. It's just my job. It's no big deal. It's nothing serious. I'm just supposed to. I don't care if you buy it or not. My job is to make sure you know what your options are. I'm supposed to get you the best deal. And if that means you can't get it from me, it is what it is. Things like that allow you to push a sense of indifference and a sense of fear of loss on them when they go, oh, it's going to end today. Oh, there's only so many left. Oh, he's not going to come back to my door. Oh, things like that allow you to, to build that impulse and help get to the close. And then, of course, a sense of urgency. Now, a sense of urgency is it make it takes no time, sir. It only takes two minutes. I like to use the word two minutes because if you say one minute, so kind of paraphrasing for some amount of time. Hey, it'll just take a second. It just takes a minute, right? But if I say it takes me two minutes, that's more specific and allows the customer to commit. We talked about that before. If I say it's going to take me, I say, sir, how much time will you give me? He says 20 minutes. Great. It'll take 15. Perfect. That's more than enough time. I'll make it fast. I'll be as quick as I can for you. And you show them value before the end of that time frame. And then before you know it, they're going to give you three times the amount of time they said they would. Or if you can't show them value within that time frame, honor that person's expectations. Say, sir, I'm sorry that I couldn't help you today. Uh, you know, I did the best I could, but it looks like I just can't be of service to you. And watch what happens. They will suddenly be like, well, okay. And then you start to show that fear of loss, basically, by saying... I'm willing to go the extra mile, but it looks like I just can't reach your expectations. And watch them lower their expectations. 
Well, no, you're doing fine. It's just, uh, I mean, I, I, my, my wife sent me in, and she wanted me to get this, and honestly, Brad, I'd, I'd much rather have that. She would be happy with that. She just thinks this, this is all we need. She thinks we have to have this. We don't, really. And watch what happens. Suddenly, you're selling them on something else. That customer's there, and now that customer believes in you, trusts in you, has faith in you, because you applied a time frame, you didn't acquire what you wanted to acquire and you honored that time frame watch that customer practically suck you off right there in aisle four okay so that's a sense of urgency now you're probably wondering how does the five steps to a conversation and the four factors of impulse apply to real life as i mentioned before well let's say i'm talking to a nice girl and for the sake of argument you know, anyone who's bisexual, homosexual, whatever. I'm doing this for the sake of conversation, just to move things along. If you don't like it and you're offended, kiss my fucking ass, you little snowflake. I don't care. Sorry about that. Anyways, so five steps of conversation, four factors of impulse. Let's say I go up to a girl in a bar, or just, you know, out in a social setting. And I say, hey, how you doing? You having fun? Right on. You from around here? Cool. Do you go to school around here? Oh, what are you going to school for? Eh, that's like four or five questions. I, she doesn't even know my name. She doesn't even know where I'm from. She doesn't even know why I'm talking to her. Am I trying to have sex with her? Am I going to try to roofie her drink? Is, am I distracting her and someone stealing her purse? She doesn't know. So that doesn't help them relax, right? What if I say, hey, how's it going? She responds, oh, it's going fine. What's up? Oh, nothing serious. Indifference. Hey, is any guys? Hey, is some guy gonna come kick me in the jaw for talking to you? Right? Showing a little bit of fun there. And she goes, oh, Yeah, well, I do have a boyfriend. He's in the bathroom. Or, well, actually, no, <laughs> no. Really? Oh, cool, cool. I mean, don't say really. Like, you know, don't lose your indifference. Right? So say, Oh, cool. Well, hey, my name is Miktail Jesus. I'm just out having fun with my friends. You having fun tonight, too? All right? I'm always ending on a question. So I'm always in control of the conversation because they answer me. And then I dictate what the next question will be or what the next topic is. And then I dictate them to answer me. It's controlling the conversation. Controlling the conversation? That's a whole other episode, ladies and gentlemen. Miktail Brothers, that is a whole nother thing. But for now, five steps to a conversation, introduction, short story, your presentation, and your close. And then rehash. Rehash gets you more profits, more for sales. But let's say I'm in a bar. Hey, how's it going? Girl responds. Cool. Some there's not gonna be some guy that's gonna come, you know, pile drive me or, you know, tackle me for saying hi to you, is there? No. Cool. Well my name is such and such just out with my friends we're having a good time i saw you and your friends having fun you guys are welcome to join us are you guys from around here oh yeah we all we're all from around here we come down here every tuesday and thursday but tonight we came in on a friday blah 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 cool well we've got a couple beers i see you guys already have some drinks we'd actually like if you joined us come on it's no big deal we're just have we're about to you know we'd like to dance this next song would you guys be interested um Ah, let me ask my friends. But if I say, would you guys be interested? It gives her an out. And I say, look, we all would like to dance with you guys on the next song. Next song. So let's just make it quick. Come on, let's go. Okay. They go with you. Now you've got four or five girls in tow. Your friends are looking at you like you're a god. And those of you out there thinking, oh, MGTOW Jesus, are you doing pickup artistry? Uh, no. Have you ever had a pickup artist video explain this stuff? in a more professional, realistic way. No, they always talk about some other, like, psychology, how to trick them. I didn't trick them. I just used the five steps to a conversation. I introduced myself. I gave them a short story, which was my who, what, and why. I presented the opportunity and built the value. And then I closed them on it with confidence. I turned and said, cool, follow me. Broke eye contact, walked away. Guess what they're going to do? Follow. Right? 
than the rehashes later on. Well, hey, you know what? This was actually really fun. You guys want? Let's dance another one. Woo! Song comes on, another song comes on. And then it's like, hey, let's get a drink. That's rehashing. I've built value in myself and my friends. I've made a sense of urgency. I've created the impulse. And now I'm rehashing. And before you know it, I might just rehash my way into a girl's heart. Am I saying that's what I want? Me personally as a MGTOW? Not really. However, understanding how to control a conversation and manipulate those around you in a positive way. Do not abuse this. Okay, gentlemen. No dark forces out there. Abuse this information. But I'm glad we could have this conversation. Gentlemen, have a wonderful night. I hope that the five steps of the conversation and the four factors of impulse have helped you. Tomorrow I will talk about controlling the conversation. And I will try to finish up with uh, the eight great work habits. Something that every single successful person in the history of mankind can all agree on as a way of becoming a successful person. Because, gentlemen, at the end of the day, it's just logical. I don't want to sound like Spock, but it's logical. If you do the right things, you put a forth a 100% effort, and you make the most out of every day, you'll be successful. So until then, have a wonderful New Year's.